Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ryan here from Game Essays, and it's been a little bit since I made a video because I have not been able to put Tears of the Kingdom down, but I finally took a pause to say, hey, let's talk about something in the game. So in this video, I will be discussing the Heber region slash Rito story section. So this is your spoiler warning about this part of the game. That's the only story section I will be talking about in this video. So if you've played it, then you're safe from any other spoilers, but that is your final warning on the Hebra slash Rito story section. So what did I think of the first major story section of the game? There is a lot I liked about it, but there is definitely a little bit of hesitation and a little bit of uh-oh uh, kind of feeling for me playing through this. So first of all, when you make it to Rito Village, it's all covered in snow, and you have that sad Dragon Roost Island music playing. I thought that was really cool. And you meet up with uh, Teba or Tiba, however you want to call him. And he's alive. A lot of people thought he was dead or something. They were like, oh no, what happened? We've only been seeing Tulin. But of course you see how Tulin has become this really ambitious kid who has a really cool ability with his uh, wind gust thing that he can do. Eventually though, you, you go through a cave and you meet up with uh, tool in towards the top of the mountain and basically you are trying to figure out what's going on with this storm that has been over Heber Mountain. And then eventually you kind of join forces with tool in and you just scale higher and higher and higher and higher until you finally make it to the top. And it was cool to see those those flying ships because we had seen them in the trailers and we were like what are these ships? What is it about them? Turns out they're just trampolines who, you know, that I guess they're all just trampolines, but it was cool because the verticality, the verticality in this game is insane. Like the, how high you go to get to what we know as the dungeon was just crazy. I thought that part scaling to the dungeon was really cool. Working with Tulin is awesome. And then we get to the dungeon and I was so happy to get in the dungeon and it says Wind Temple and I was like, yes, here we go. Dungeons. We are finally at the dungeons. Now, first thing I did, which I do not recommend doing because I was stupid. When you get to these said dungeons, make sure you hit the green thing to activate whatever needs to be activated. Because I didn't realize he had to do that, so Tulin was not following me around. And I'm just like, what the hell am I supposed to do in this place? Nothing was working. Finally, I figured- and then I died, actually. And then it sent me back outside the dungeon. I was like, what? I was like, this is a severe punishment. I noticed I couldn't save. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Finally, I hit the green thing. It all made sense that uh, the dungeon activates. And you can actually do everything. Tulin follows you around. And if you die then you're okay and you can be saved, all that good stuff. So that's fine. Just make sure you, you activate that when you first get to a dungeon. Because yeah, you're going to regret it if you don't and you won't be able to accomplish anything anyway. That aside, I quickly noticed once I actually properly activated the dungeon that, oh boy, we're kind of doing Divine Beasts again. But don't get me wrong. These are better than Divine Beasts. They feel more fleshed out. Aesthetically, it fit the Rito vibe. It was cool that it's this awesome flying ship. It felt more like a dungeon. It seems like we're now... We're kind of meeting at a halfway point where it feels like kind of a dungeon, but it also feels like a Divine Beast. But it's a much improved. And I will say this. This obviously gives me the vibes of seeing a pattern that much like Breath of the Wild, well, at the time I didn't know with Breath of the Wild, but once you got to two Divine Beasts in Breath of the Wild, you were like, ah, crap, they're all going to be like this, aren't they? So I'm getting that vibe that uh, probably all the dungeons are going to feel this same way of like 50% dungeon, 50% Divine Beast. But it is cool to have like a companion with you while you're doing it. And the puzzles are definitely a little bit more interesting than they were in the Divine Beast. So I will say it's an improvement. But I also want to say that 
if there's no traditional dungeons at all in this game, then I'm okay with it because there is so much. This game provides you with so much that I don't think it necessarily needs traditional dungeons. And it's like, they must have tested them. There's no way that the team did not test, like, what would a dungeon similar to, I don't know, the Forest Temple feel like in the world of Tears of the Kingdom? Like, they had to have done some tests because, like, we see elements of these types of dungeons like in the shrines but you know even small keys and stuff like that we see in the shrines so i'm just curious why they decided to still go this route and i feel like there must be a reason it just might be too limiting or whatever nevertheless i will say it's an improvement thematically and then we can talk about the boss colgera was awesome that was a super fun boss in the music. The music was incredible to have those pieces of the Dragon Roost Island slash Rito Village theme in there. Absolutely incredible. Is it the hardest boss? No. But it was super fun to just like skydive crash through Skolgera, uh, Kolgera rather. It was awesome. I had such a blast with the boss. So the boss already is a major improvement over the Blights major major improvement and I've heard some sentiments that people think this boss and maybe some of the other bosses have only technically at this point played one other boss but people were saying that they're too easy things like that and I will say Zelda bosses have pretty much always been on the easier side Twilight Princess Wind Waker even A Link to the Past a lot of the bosses were a complete pushover so Bosses have never been this Elden Ring, Dark Souls type difficulty, and they've always kind of had a gimmick to them. And they were just really boring in Breath of the Wild. And I had so much fun with Kolgera just flying through the air and then crashing through the body, dodging tornadoes. It really put the skydiving uh, mechanic that they added to this game on full display. And it was a blast. So, bosses, I think we got what we asked for so far. I have, like I said, I've only played two bosses and I won't talk about the other one. But they delivered for me on the bosses. The dungeons, it, so far with the Wind Temple, I don't think it quite delivered. I'm very curious about the other dungeons and what they're going to bring. But at this point, I will say that they are an improvement... They don't scratch the same itch as a traditional dungeon, but if they don't scratch that itch, I'm okay because there is so much content and I'm having so much fun with the game that if this is the new direction, I'm okay with it because they're offering me other things. So that's my feelings, short and sweet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about the Hebra slash Rito section. Please keep it to just that in the comments. Be respectful. We don't want to spoil things. And I'll talk to you guys next time.